in this video a kind of deep dive into the properties of shortwave radios made with only one coil. So direct receiving and um, I hope that I can uh, explain somewhat more. I've connected here now this coil salvaged of an uh, old uh, long wave and medium wave radio and parallel to that coil is this uh, sorry, this uh, variable capacitor. You read here absorption meter, but I don't use it as an absorption meter, but only as a tuning capacitor going from say 20 to 500 picofarad. The whole circuit is by the way exactly the same. And this is a, a thing that I made this evening. I wanted to make an antenna for a uh, long wave and I hope that it will work. It was not very successful up until now. I, I did a few first experiments and I couldn't receive anything, only noise etc etc. But that is all directly related to the radio hobby. So anyway, perhaps it will be successful in the future. But here for instance you see the number of the windings. 50, 30, 60, 20 and 10. And I, I have spread them especially in that way. Because in that case you can get a good variation of coils. Say this antenna. A good variation of the properties of this antenna because you can shortcut certain pa parts of that coil. When you shortcut for instance the, the 50, uh, 50 uh, windings you have a coil of um, this size and the 10 you have a coil of another size anyway. There must be for experiments uh, a maximum, say, uh, spread of uh, experimental windings. Anyway, that's not the aim of this video. I only wanted to show the properties again from that uh, very simple two transistor radio with a field effect transistor. And here is that long wave coil. But you can see that the ferrite core is not sticked in very much. So we are surely not on long wave radio anyway. I tune now with that zero up to sorry 20 picofarad up to 500 picofarad capacitor. Yeah. And there are different stations, audible, intelligible, and this is one. That's the strongest radio station that I can receive now in the Netherlands. The middle, in the middle, um, and you hear, of course, a lot of hum, etc., etc., and. The thing that's very important here <laughs> is that I have now hooked up the 4 meter indoor antenna directly to the coil, so not via that 14 picofarad capacitor. And that has certain good things and bad things. The bad thing is that it is less selective, but on the other hand that long wire antenna in my room uh, of 4 meters has also, a, in a certain way, a defined inductance and capacitance. And in this case uh, it doesn't uh, deteriorate the properties of the coil, but it strengthens the property of the coil. 
There's a reason why here we can receive that radio station in a good way. And more radio stations. And I want to tell, uh, this is the first AF radio amplifier, audio amplifier. And there's a second one here inside. So I switch it on to get the maximum uh, audio amplification. Anyway, could lead to oscillations, but anyway. And I want to focus and tell that I have made many much better uh, radios and they are on my uh, page on the Lulu website. A simple shortwave radio, AM short, shortwave radio. But in this video I only want to show the properties of these simple shortwave radios that have a limited selectivity but on the other hand for instance when you connect here from the drain here uh, a small capacitor to the coil the, you can use this concept as a so-called re regenerative radio that means that a part a part of the a part of the amplified signal that's available here here on the source is sent back via a very small capacitor to the coil and of course in that case you need a taps on the coil and when you don't use a fixed value capacitor but a variable capacitor you can set the amplification from that uh, first field effect transistor to the maximum. And we call this in uh, uh, shortwave technology a Q multiplier. So a quality multiplier. The quality of the coil is uh, set to its maximum and we set in that case this radio with that adaptation to the edge of amplification and when you turn that variable capacitor from the source to the coil, coil to its maximum the whole radio will start to weep anyway I don't want it to pay attention uh, much more uh, to that um, circuit in the earlier videos because it's a very critical circuit and the whole circuit here in such a case where you want to use it as a as an audio amplifier has to be made in a very very stable way and you can see here on this piece of wood it is in a kind of way stable but not stable enough to use it as the so-called Audion shortwave amplifier anyway. Again, uh, I was talking about the indoor antenna that now was directly um, connected to the top of the coil, that's here, the top, and that indoor uh, antenna has of course a certain fixed uh, capacitance and a fixed inductance and, and when you connect that directly here not via that 14 picofarad capacitor it adds something to the coil and you can do more experiments for instance with a 2 meter indoor antenna of, of course such a 2 meter indoor antenna will have an other natural capacitance and a natural inductance. So on some frequencies that will work better, but on other frequencies, when the antenna does not, uh, say, uh, amplifies the properties of the coil, 
it will not work properly. It will damp the coil anyway. So let's listen again. As far as I could hear, this is India or so. I don't know that exactly anyway. It doesn't matter much. And you can hear different radio stations. When you tune that capacitor, and of course here, you find radio stations, but it, they are very, very weak. These are radio stations, or perhaps radio bands in a certain way, where radio stations are active. But uh, because of the low selectivity, you will also find peaks, uh, reception peaks, in a certain frequency band. Not on a specific radio station, but on a specific frequency band. And that means that you can hear the noise going up from zero to max. So that's, that's what happens here. So there are, as far as I know, radio stations active, but you can discriminate them because of the low properties of that radio amplifier. This simple, very, very simple radio amplifier. But here, here there is a real radio station. Anyway. Uh, what I wanted to tell more is let's push this ferrite rod into that typical long wave coil and that means that we now, when we are lucky, are able to receive long wave radio stations. And it could be that these long wave radio stations appear when the ferrite, ferrite rod is not sticked in completely but uh, for instance, halfway. Uh, that means that the inductance um, is peaked on a on a specific frequency, say in between. So anyway, that's that has also to do with the properties, with the tuning, not only with the properties, but also with the tuning of the variable capacitor. So let's see whether whether we can receive something here. So this is what we receive. I don't know what it, what kind of signal this is. Uh, it could be, uh, say, a solar panel regulator in the uh, direct environment where I live, or whatever. It's not a radio station. Here's a radio station. Uh, you can peak such a radio station on, I think, long wave, could be medium wave, I don't know that anyway. This video regards only the principles of radio reception. You can peak that radio station here. By taking that ferrite rod out. So, here is the peak. And the reception is of course very, very bad anyway. Also with superheterodyne radios on long wave you meet some reception problems when you don't have an adequate long wave antenna. And when we talk about long wave, the antenna must be kilometers or so, at least when, uh, when we talk about uh, the typical frequency of a long wave antenna. Anyway, uh, they, tied, they tried to 
avoid that problem with this type of antenna, the ferrite antenna, that acts on only on the magnetic part of the radio signal, the electromagnetic part anyway. Let's try to get better amplification. I'll put down the camera, I don't know what I'm uh, filming now anyway. And it's also important that such an antenna made with a ferrite rod is sensitive directive. So when you turn it in a certain direction, you have better receiving results. And I hope I can make it visible. Well, that's a problem. I cannot make that visible, but when you do experiments with such a coil, or long wave, medium wave, you will surely find that when you turn the ferrite rod in a certain direction, you will receive a radio station uh, better. That has all to do with the properties of these waves, radio waves. So, that was more or less all to tell. Uh, let's take the ferrite rod out. And again, you can hear different radio stations. They are very weak. Anyway, it's always interesting to do these kinds of experiments to get a good idea about how shortwave works. And of course, that's very important, uh, shortwave reception is at its best during the evening and the night. That has to do with ionospheric properties, anyway. So, for instance, during the night you can receive radio stations from very, very far away, hundreds, sorry, thousands of kilometers. But during the day, perhaps you will receive nothing. And it has also to do with a sunspot cycle. That is, as far as I know, a cycle of, um, say, eight years or so. You can find easily more info on the World Wide Web or Wikipedia about shortwave reception. And certain radio bands are, say, not very well active. They are diminished when the, uh, the sun, the sunspot cycle, is in a certain part of its cycle. Anyway, I hope that that, that is clear anyway.